Hi everybody, my name is Marta Mama. I'm your basic queer bitch. And since I'm from Spain, but I grew up in the US, I think I have kind of a unique perspective on Drag Race España. So let me explain you all the references. En ese momento, el tener pluma era muy, muy problemático. problemático. Tenías la ley que te metían a la cárcel. Sí. Before we start, I'm gonna leave you my PayPal account down below in case you want to support this channel. You know, I'm a single mom, I'm struggling a lot, so if you appreciate my content, I would really, really appreciate any type of help. Thank you very much in advance. So let's start with the mini challenge. In the mini challenge, the girls had to guess what was inside of a box, just touching it uh, without like being able to see. And this was something that was quite popular in a lot of game shows. You know, the type of game shows where celebrities go? Well, in Spain, in like the late 90s or the early 2000s, there were a lot of these type of game shows. Uh, for example, in Andalucía, we had Gente con Chispa. Uh, they're all like pretty much terrified, except for Venedita. These things seem like, I don't know, they turn her on somehow. So the first one is Estrella. She had to guess like pickled eggs, but I guess that those like pickled eggs must be like very, very stinky because she was gagging, like literally gagging, not gay gagging, uh, the whole time. And Estrella has done this several times this season where she starts literally gagging with something. Uh, and it's so convincing, like I was feeling like gagging too. But yeah, she was very, very funny because egg, huevo, is the Spanish word that we use just to talk about testicles. Just like in the US, maybe you would use nuts uh, or balls. Here we would use huevos, eggs. And she says, yeah, I don't like those type of eggs. I like uh, the eggs when they bounce here on my face. <laughs> Then we have Venedita, she had to guess uh, like a big dildo and a little merkin and she grabs, very very quickly, she grabs the dildo and she says a penis and everyone's like yay but she forgot about the merkin inside and then she says in a little talking head like yeah I saw the penis and I was all excited but then I forgot that there was like a pussy there why could that be? Why didn't I think about the pussy? <laughs> Marina was the next one and Marina was terrified because she's very, very afraid of insects, like especially cockroaches. So it took her a very long time to be able to put her hand inside of the box. Uh, but yeah, it was so cute. It was only gelatin, but you had Supreme next to her saying, let me give you a hint. It, it moves very, very slowly. So it really took her a long time to be able to put her hand inside of the box because she was terrified. And then Sharon had to guess like a bald head of a pig crew member. Thank you very much to everyone who tagged me when they saw the bald guy. <laughs> everyone was saying like, that's Marta Mama's head, yeah. <laughs> So the winner of the mini challenge is Estrella because Venedita took a little bit longer to know that there was something else in that box. So Estrella won a shooting for Shanghai Magazine, which is probably the biggest like LGBT publication that we have in Spain. And then we get to know that this week's maxi challenge is the makeover challenge. And this was like so beautiful. The people that they had to make over are from the, the December 26th Foundation, La Fundación 26 de Diciembre. It's an organization in Spain that works for LGBTQ um, elders. And they have like a beautiful project where they're making the first LGBTQI plus public old folk home. And I think this was such a great idea because you know, sometimes in Drag Race, it is a little bit hard to work between several generations because a lot of these people uh, weren't accepted by their family and a lot of these people do not have like children to take care of them. It's especially important to take care of our elders in the LGBT community. And, you know, in Spain, Spain is a country where you usually live in the same city than your parents usually live in, the, live in the same city of your grandparents. Grandparents are usually very important socially here because they help to take care of the children. They are like an important part of society and you would like see 
children and elders integrated in society all the time here in Spain. Old folk homes are not something that are very popular because as we will see later, usually when older people can't like be completely independent, there would be a son of a, or a daughter that would take care of them. And because many times LGBTQ people uh, didn't have any children, um, it sometimes it's like their role to take care of elderly people because I don't know if you're the only queer person in your family and your other siblings all have children well it's probably you the one with less responsibilities the one that's going to take care of the elder generation so I think it's very interesting I loved it it was so heartwarming so let's get to know these people from La Fundación 26 de Diciembre First, we have Federico or Antonia, that's uh, the president of the foundation. Uh, she's so sassy, so cute, so like heartwarming. Next to her, we have her husband, Ino, also called Consuelo because uh, the saint in her, in her little village is called Consolacion. So she took the name from that like famous saint in his village. Uh, these married couple are the cutest thing I've ever seen on TV. I love them so much. Both of them are like so sassy but so vulnerable and honest as well. And yeah, I just loved it. Next to them we have Manuela Teresa. Uh, I've been looking her up and it looks like he is a like an artist like maybe a photographer, similar type of art to maybe Andy Warhol, but in a Spanish version. And Estrella teams up with him because they do look very similar. It's like you're seeing what Estrella is going to be like in the future. And I just love all the pairings that they did. And the fourth one is Petro Valverde. Uh, Petro Valverde is like a household name. Like we all know who Petro Valverde is. He's a very famous haute couture, alta costura uh, designer in Spain. Very nice representation of what a successful LGBTQ elder person looks like. So yeah, he's an idol for a lot of people. He's very well known because he was the designer of the wedding dress of La Infanta Elena. Uh, Infanta is the word that we have in, Sp in Spain for our princesses. So that was the first royal wedding that we had in Spain in a hundred years because it was the first wedding after the dictatorship and he was the designer for the dress. And I love when Sharon did, said like, uh, Petro Valverde is so, so, so talented. He was even able to make the princess look beautiful because, well, the princess doesn't. <laughs> Then Supreme and Anna Looking come into the workroom with this giant birthday cake because it's someone's birthday. We get to know it's Estrella's birthday. She's turning 26 years old and it's also Pedro Valverde's birthday and he was turning 75. But it was like a nice moment, like a little celebration. I love how the tension in the room changes in the makeover challenges and it gets to be something like personal and vulnerable and you know it's nice. Then Supreme and Anna looking to the walk through the workroom giving some advice and I really like the way that they give advice in Spain. They don't necessarily make you doubt, they give you their honest concerns. They don't try to trip you. They don't try to confuse you. They just give you good, honest advice. So I loved it. I loved watching Consuelo, Ino, just looking at Benedita work saying, wow, it's so cool seeing you, like watching you work. I love it. I don't know. It was so very nice. And then they start having like very interesting conversations. Uh, this married couple, Antonia and Consuelo, um, talk about the way they took care of Consuelo's parents when they were too old to take care of themselves and that they lived together for many years, like a very nice family where everyone was included and everyone took care of everyone. They talk about the difficult times after, you know, with the recession Consuelo had to leave the country in order to work and make money. And her partner, Antonia, was the one that took care of their parents-in-law uh, in the time that they weren't there. 
and that when the father very sadly passed away it was the son-in-law that one that was there with him and I don't know it was like so nice and so heartwarming because they were saying they were talking about sad things but sad things are going to come in life the thing is how you live through them and they were talking about it with I don't know such like an honest and vulnerable way that I, if, I, you can imagine that I spent the whole episode crying and the best part I think was when uh, these two married couple after talking about all this and feeling this love that they have for each other and knowing what their family was about that's when they decided to start their organization and they talk a little bit about this and they end up like giving each other a hug and a nice warm long kiss and it's so beautiful being able to see two gay men that are over 60 years old kissing each other. I think that we we are used to only having like one generation of LGBTQ people on TV. But I think it was like very, very, very beautiful. And I was like, I just love them so much. And these are like the coolest, the coolest elders that you can imagine. When they ask Antonia, for example, like, hey, how do you feel you're gonna be competing with your hubby here? And she says, well, when in doubt, I'd rather be the widow. <laughs> They're so cute! And it is true that if you think about it, it is true that we, during our dictatorship, it was like very, very hard being a queer person and they talk about it. They talk about when they were arrested, the type of law that they were arrested for. They talk about all this history. And Supreme says it like a little bit. If you think about it, we had a lot, a lot, a lot of repression until the 80s, basically, even the 90s. But after that, Spain was a, one of the first countries in the world that uh, approved equal marriage, so where gay people could marry each other. So, so our social struggle as LGBTQ people and the fight and the rights is something that has come very, very fast, very, very quickly. And we have normalized a lot of things in Spain. So it's very cool that we're like paying tribute to that whole generation because we went from zero to not a hundred, but basically in very little time. So I'm super proud of them. Then we have the runway. Can we talk about how spectacular Supreme looks with this golden dress and this dark hair with no like gray roots? Like what? She looks so beautiful. That makeup makes her, her well, those are contact lenses, I'm sure, but make her, uh, her green eyes look so green. She looks so beautiful. Those, look, those lips are so beautiful in her. I just think she looked amazing. And the guest judge this week is Alexis Mateo. And I just, I'm just so, so, so happy that from all the judges we had, so many very important drag queens in the panel of judges. I think that no one can judge drag race as a drag queen because those are the ones that really know what they're talking about when you put someone in the judges panel that are just there to promote their new TV show or whatever. Uh, they don't really know what they're talking about many times. So I really, really, really love that we've had Alexis Mateo, Choriza May and La Prohibida this season in the panel of judges. It's the best thing about Drag Race España. And Alexis Mateo says a very, very funny thing. She says, I try everything once. If I like it, I repeat. And if I love it, I swallow. <laughs> Alexis Mateo is also the person in charge of making fashion photo review for Drag Race España. You can watch that. I don't know if it's available on YouTube. I watch it in Wow for Sense. And she does the part of fashion photo review with Choriza May, who was also a guest judge. So yeah, that is very, very cool. Then we have the looks. First we have Estrella Estravaganza. They're both wearing these like pink bodysuits. One of them has a leg off. They're trying to color block this pink with a neon yellow with a silver. I didn't think this was the most successful look. Uh, they were wearing 
red shoes, which I thought were awful, like that color. I know what they were trying to do with the color blocking. I love when you mix like a magenta and a red because it's so wrong that it's right. But there weren't, there wasn't enough red. They tried to paint their lips red to match those shoes, but it wasn't the right color of pink and it wasn't a correct pink to red ratio to be able to pull that off. And yeah, but I, what I loved about Estrella is the way she lived it. Like she, once you get to that last episode, I think that you don't care as much. You have had a lot of airtime. Estrella thought that she was going to be in the final anyway, so she decided to take advantage of this opportunity and have a very good time and especially make Teresa have a good time. I think that's something the four of them did. Like Teresa wasn't feeling pressured at all. There wasn't, there was nothing that Teresa could have done wrong to make Estrella feel angry somehow, you know what I mean? So I love that vibe in general. Then uh, Sharon and Shireen uh, come down the runway looking like Marilyn and Jane Russell in Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. And there are these like old, old Hollywood glamour ladies. And when they come down the runway, they switch around and they start fighting. And she's wearing like a red sequins dress that it's like the two way sequins. So when they start fighting, they start turning the sequins to make it green. This is very difficult to translate, but putting someone green in Spanish, poner a alguien verde, means to talk shit about them. So what they are doing is that they're putting each other green, literally, meaning they're talking shit about each other. Very, very smart, very good concept. Pedro Valverde, Shireen, looked amazing. Uh, Sharon is a master at makeup and like special effects makeup and looking like impersonating different people and the way she contoured her face like especially her double chin and everything I thought that was superb they both looked beautiful I just she's a master the only downfall that we can say with Chiron is that this is the very classic Chiron silhouette we've seen this where she's wearing a sequence gown with like heavy shoulders, a tiny waist, and this type of length. We've seen this like in every color already, but it's like Bianca del Rio with her classic silhouette. And instead of like critiquing that, what the judges say is that every time I see the classic Chiron silhouette, I just lose my mind. So it wasn't something that they put against her. Then Marina and Antonia come down the runway looking like kind of like rich ladies with all this fur and everything. And then they basically reveal to a much more like trashy uh, person. And they were hiding like alcohol and a lollipop between their wigs. And, you know, it was, it was messy. It was very messy, but I just love the concept and the fun they were having. Antonia was having like so much fun and was living it. And I don't know, I thought it was very funny and you know, the pun, like one is licking and the other one is swallowing. And I know, I don't know, I just love Marina so much. Marina's ability to tell you a story down the runway is something that is unmatched. I just love how theatrical she is with every single presentation and how different all her presentations are. So I just, I, I just love Marina. And then we have Benedita and Vinagreta Bondage. So this was amazing. The makeup transformation of Vinagreta's face. They, I, uh, right? <laughs> uh, they shaved uh, her beard, but they kept the chin strap. And it actually looks very good on her, just like Benedita's one. And she was able to like transform his face into Benedita's face, but a more like mature custom face for Consuelo. I just, I thought this was genius. The outfits were very simple, but worked very, very well. One, was like the mother and she was wearing like black and white comic pattern 
and Venedita was the color comic pattern. So I love that. And then they start telling us this story that they're like a mom and a daughter that are also like strippers and they start asking for money in order to sh show their boobs and I don't know what type of relation that has with the comic thing but honestly I don't give a fuck they were so nice <laughs> they were so cool and the transformation on Consuelo was just so amazing and it's true what they say the judges say that Benedita is able to understand perfectly what are her iconic things so it's easier for her to transform anyone once she is like very very aware of what are her elements her personal take on drag so yeah this was very very i was so 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 proud of Benedita this episode we have a beautiful moment too where javier ambrosi talks with the president of this foundation with antonia and he personally thanks Antonia for everything that Antonia has done for, for him. And I thought this was, none of us know the backstory. I don't think that they have explained it in social media of anything, but yeah, sometimes people from, you know, organizations and foundations and everything, you know, and artists, they know each other. And I think it's beautiful because unlike in Drag Race US, this felt 100% honest, it felt 100% true and vulnerable and sincere and it was like a very true thank you that came from the heart, it didn't feel rehearsed, it didn't feel like pressured, I thought it was like such a beautiful honest moment. And while the judges are like talking about the girls, Supreme says silence and she cuts Alexis Mateo mid-sentence and the face of Alexis Mateo is like bitch did you just <laughs> but she does she's very you know but her face though her face when the girls come back we have you know this moment where they show them pictures of themselves as a baby and in case we hadn't cried enough I think now we were all like bawling like oh my god this episode made me cry so many times you know I'm a crier but wasn't it was was it me was I the only one because I cried a lot and I love crying about beautiful things I never cry about sad things I only feel very emotional with beautiful things so I was very 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 pleased there is this thing about the pictures that can get a little bit boring it can get a little bit repetitive and that is something difficult to say because everything that each girl is saying is something that is very important but um we've seen this episode so many times that it's kind of always the same story like yeah you're gonna grow up and people are gonna hate you because you are gay and you are fat but you have to like they tell like the same exact things all the time and I don't understand it like if I had to talk with my past self and they were showing me my like baby picture I would say you know what girl you're the best you're the coolest bitch around and everything's gonna be great in your life I wouldn't like entertain my five-year-old self with all my future drama in my life and everything that's going to be terrible I would say like you know you are the best and that's it. like I don't know what you want to traumatize your five-year-old self it's not like you're going to avoid any pain in your life but I guess it's the opportunity that they have to talk about themselves and their life and it's not really talking to their five-year-old self it's more let me explain you where I come from and how it, let's reflect about everything that has happened since then until now but I liked you know the approach of Benedita she was the only one that wasn't crying I, I'm a crier like uh, I have no problem with that Marina was also a little bit like that she said happy things but Benedita's like you go girl like you're the best <laughs> I just loved it and then we get to know that the winner of this episode is Benedita she 100% deserved it Sharon is safe so the lip sync is going to be between Marina and Estrella so I have a couple of things to say about this first of all I want to remind everyone how the first 
season went. In the first season, we had Carmen Farala, Killer Queen, Sagittaria, and Poopy Poison. That was the top four. And I think Carmen won, and we had a three-way lip sync. So after that lip sync, Poopy, that actually had a very, very good lip sync, went home and we were all very sad because, you know, Poopy Poison is always going to be a very big fan favorite here in Spain. So I know that the production really wanted to keep a top four last season, but they weren't allowed to. I don't know if it was WOW Presents directly, but they tried to make that happen and they weren't allowed to. They think they fought it this season to have the top four, but the thing is that none of us were expecting a top four. We just assume that that wasn't going to happen and that we weren't allowed to have a top four so it was like the biggest surprise everyone like all of us had even forgotten that that was a possibility so that was very very cool each one is doing their own thing marina is dancing is marina is doing all these exercises marina is usually like such a chill person except when she's on stage and she's like a little sparkle. She can't stop moving. She's doing like all these things. And Estrella, on the other hand, took a more like comedic approach. She has a little Muppet and she does the whole thing talking with the Muppet. And this is funny because I don't know if you guys follow Estrella on social media, but the whole season Estrella has been posting pictures like this where she has been hinting things about future episodes. So in these pictures, you can see the little Muppet that she used here. And you can also see like the onions from El Diario de Putricia. You can see the newspaper from last week's episode. You can see the iPod. You can see all of these very, very different things that have been part of the season somehow. She has been posting this online, like, what can you see here without saying anything? So that was super cute. We finally get to know what the little dragon was for. So yeah, that was very cute. And it was very difficult to decide, in my opinion. Um, Estrella took off her shoes and she wasn't really moving that much, but she was very funny. But Marina was doing a very good job. It was very difficult choosing. And as you know, Estrella is like the biggest fan favorite ever. We all love, love, love her very, very much. So like, it was very difficult for everyone in that moment. And they announced that Marina, uh, Shantae you say and we were all crying once again thinking that it was going to be just like last season with Poopy Poison the fan favorite that you know but then they say that Estrella can also stay and that we have a top four instead of a top three and I was the happiest person on earth. I was just like, oh my God, thank you so much. So now we have a top four. Let's go them one by one saying the good, the bad and the ugly about each of them. It's very difficult to choose a team with this top four in my opinion. I've never felt so divided personally with the top girls of the season in any season of Drag Race. In my opinion, Sharon has dominated the competition. Sharon is the one that deserves to win, like objectively, if you look at the challenges, if you look what, if you look at what they are looking for in a drag queen. Sharon is the one that has competed best. She is the best at drag racing but she is not my personal favorite and I love her drag. I love, love, love her drag and I think she's such a professional, but sometimes as an artist, this is just my liking, I like artists that are a little more personal and vulnerable and that can get a little bit rough around the edges and that explain a little bit more about who they are, uh, that they have some type of speech in what they do, but I have never seen a winner more deserving than her. She is in like the Vivian Envy Peru category, like she deserves to win. But usually the one that wins isn't my favorite because I'm a punk bitch. Benedita is someone that has surprised everybody, I think. Uh, we already knew that she was going to do an excellent job, but 
you know, the worst challenge that she has had all season has been the roast. And it was quite successful to be in the bottom, you know. So she was in the bottom because everyone did a very, very good job. But she has excelled throughout the whole competition. And the thing I love the most about Benedita is how she is, like, her personality. Because usually the people that are mo more successful with their personalities in Drag Race are the louder ones. But Benedita is not a loud person. Benedita is, like, very, very chill, but very assertive in a way. And she's very humble as well. And I think she's very, very funny. I think that if we had to choose... Uh, someone that is the narrator of the season, the best talking heads. Of course, we will talk about Estrella, but uh, I personally love Benedita the most in the talking heads. And I also have to say that Benedita has always treated me amazing. All of them have, but, uh, you know, like every Monday morning after the episode, we always chat, she always takes her time to talk with me. She has always explained like absolutely everything. Like I could say that about Estrella too. Estrella has like offered herself to help me with my children when I was sick. So all of them are great. But for me, Benedita is the type of artist that can be at the same time very, very assertive and have a lot of confidence but also be very humble. And I think she has like this sportsmanship and she doesn't care too much about the competition. With the weeks, I just love, love Benedita so, so, so much. So I'm very proud to see her there. Then we have Estrella Extravaganza. Um, as you know, I have been team Estrella since the very beginning. I think Estrella is not the best at drag racing, but I do think that Estrella is the most likable person that we've had on TV in a very long time, especially in drag race, but just in general. Her personality is just so nice, so fresh, the way she speaks, the way she does everything. Estrella is a person that approaches drag with so much love and she has like a childish quality in her where everything is like a game and she does things just because they feel nice or like she just feels like doing those sometimes those are things that don't help her in the competition but like when she was eating dirt dressed up as an onion or when she was a nun and she used un mantoncillo as the headscarf of the nuns or there are like so many things that aren't things that have helped her in the competition per se but are things that just explains to everyone that she is a person that understands performance in that way and I just love that way of understanding drag like it's something that you feel passionate about that you just think it's funny and you just want to share it with everyone and have a good laugh I just I'm I will always be Team Estrella. And Marina is someone that has been a surprise for a lot of people, but it wasn't for me. As you know, since the very first episode that I saw that Ocaña tribute, I immediately understood who Marina was. And then week after week, I was surprised with the edit that we're giving Marina. Like in the talking heads, she always looks like this person that feels above everything. But then when you see her in the workroom, she was like a complete different person. And I think that in the last couple of episodes, we've had this like transformation in Marina and it wasn't her, it was just the edit, I think. But we've got to love her. I think that she is someone that understands drag and performance as something very natural, as something very joyful. She has activism as well because there is nothing as powerful in activism as living your true self with joy. Marina is the type of artist that I'm most attracted to. I understand that people don't like her as much as I do. I'm just obsessed with her. And it for me, it is impossible to choose because I understand that Sharon uh, deserves it.
because she has dominated the competition. Benedita, I think, that also deserves it in a competition, competition-wise. Not as well as Sharon, but she has shown more about her personal view of drag, her like styling, her elements, who she is, her talking heads were brilliant, like all of that. Estrella is just the most likable human being on earth and she approaches drag with so much joy and Marina is such an interesting artist and such a vulnerable and true artist that for me like I, for me it's impossible to choose the good thing is that I'm not I know I'm gonna be happy no matter who wins but each one of them deserve to be there so, 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 so much. So I want to give like a very, very, very big thank you to everyone that have sent me PayPal's. My last video is flopping, like it doesn't have many views because it took me a long time to film it after COVID and COVID and everything. But I have had a lot of support from a lot of people. So truly from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. You're actually saving me and my children this month. So. Thank you a lot. So that's all for today. I would love for you guys to comment down below who your favorite from this top four is. And I also, I also think that you have someone that you think that deserves to win and you have your favorite drag queen. And sometimes that's the same person. Sometimes that those are different people. So you can comment both things down below. So that's all for today. Thank you very, very much. I love you all. Stay queer.